Michigan is one of the crucial battleground states where the U.S. election will likely be decided. Are we guys ready to go? These volunteers work for Engage, an organization that aims to bring Muslims out to the polls, a key electorate in this region. Do you know what they have in common, our candidates, that some people might have major concerns about at the door? They are pro-ceasefire, pro-peace, anti-war candidates. Muslim Americans are the most diverse religious community in the U.S. A large proportion are black or Asian, with 18 percent identifying as Arab. They don't always agree politically, but if there's one issue that unites them, it's the plight of the Palestinians. Can I talk to you a couple minutes about elections? Uh, you know, uh, it's not a good time right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, can I leave this with you? This year, we struggle a little bit because there is a bit of voter apathy, just given what's happening in Gaza. Um, a lot of people feel like their electeds don't represent their values and their beliefs. So we do have to do, put in a little more effort to get people to the polls this year. Muslim Americans have criticized Biden's administration for supporting Israel. Without a change in policy, many are likely to abstain and vote only in local and state elections. The community is um, still waiting to see what Vice President Harris is going to say and what her policies are with Gaza. I mean, maybe she'll change her course and maybe the community will change their course too. Joe Biden won Michigan by around 155,000 votes. The registered Muslim voters within Michigan are almost a little over 200,000. And in 2020, we were actually able to mobilize 145,000 Muslim, Muslim voters. So the path to the White House is definitely through Michigan. And I think without Muslim voters in Michigan, it will be really hard to win the election. It's a fact that worried Biden's team when he was at the top of the ticket. Kamala Harris has defended Israel's right to exist, but has called for an end to hostilities in Gaza. But these young voters want more. I know a lot of what she's um, going for and like what she represents aligns with Biden a lot. They've been on the same team. Yeah, I feel like I need, to, I need to see her do more for me to be like, oh yes, like her. The war in Gaza and policy towards Israel are also fundamental issues for Jewish Americans. In Miami, home to one of the country's largest communities, the subject is often brought up at synagogues on Shabbat. You might know who must win this election, but in this campaign, you can't assume that either candidate is going to embrace a pro-Israel, pro-Jewish message. You just can't. As we know, there are other communities out there raising their voices protesting, spewing hate against us in the Jewish state. They make a lot of noise. Our noise, our shofar blasts, they got to get louder. They have to get stronger. Typically, most Jewish Americans vote for the Democratic Party. This year, however, many of them are hesitant. U.S. support for Israel has not wavered, but some are finding the rhetoric confusing. It's a flip-flopping of I support, I don't support. You have to really look at, am I going to vote for this again or am I going to vote for someone else? I have to think long and hard. If this is what I want, does it align with what I believe in? Does it align with how I believe we should be backing Israel? What I may have thought before October 7th has certainly changed. The U.S. did somewhat come to Israel's aid, but uh, it, it is clear that a terrorist organization needs to be destroyed. And this government's response has been questionable it, to me and, and many of my friends. The support of Jewish and Muslim Americans is important for the Democrats if they want to win on November 5th. But for Biden, it has proven almost impossible to thread the needle in a way which appeases both sides. His successor will inherit the same problem which has stumped generations of American presidents from both sides of the aisle.